the sound effects. Wasn't sure how it would work. I opened, I shook aggressively instead of gently, so. Okay. Uh, this is Pot of the Beholder. And episode one. Episode one. And marker. And action. Hi, guys. We are the uh, having the inaugural episode of Pot of the Beholder. Sorry, you, you had a question. I saw it cross your eyes. <laughs> uh, it's gone. It's gone. Great. Um, today, we, did, we didn't want to do board game stuff. We wanted to talk about something that we've had a lot of fun. Uh, Larry and I have been really big fans of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But also its spin-off show, its very successful spin-off show, five seasons, over 100 episodes, Angel. And that's what we wanted to talk about today, because we finally convinced Tony to watch... After like a decade of seeing Buffy. Yeah. It's probably been like 12 years. Yeah. yeah. I thought about it the it other day. It was like 2010. 2010? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Yeah, too old. Years, dude, man. Crazy. So anyways... <laughs> How did you start talking about this? Because Larry and I... Uh, love, it. I love it. Love it. We just all watched the last episode together, but I have not done a rewatch in some time. I'm about to. I'm working my way through Buffy, and then I'm going to be like, well, with my girlfriend, be like, okay, since we're watching Buffy, the spinoff has now begun, so yeah, now we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna figure to. out how to watch this in succession with each other. I'm sorry, Larry. Uh, 230 <laughs> episodes in three weeks. I could not do not it. Not my yeah. fault. You didn't watch it 13 years ago with the rest of us. <laughs> 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 so I would say a little bit of background to this. Yeah, uh, these guys have been chilling the show <laughs> yeah. for thirty. No shame. <laughs> no shame. We absolutely adore it. Uh, I've literally been told multiple times it is the best thing to ever exist, ever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Without any sarcasm. Best mm -hmm. thing ever filmed. Okay. Or together. Anything. Together. Both. Uh, yes. That. The, that's important. That important. Both of them together. I've heard make that, a perfect thing. I, I heard that the finale is the best finale written to anything ever existing. Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to talk about the show. We're not going to include any of the comic stuff that exists out there. We're not going to include any of that or care about that because... Otherwise this conversation will never end. Correct. And plus it doesn't, you know, that's after media, right? It does, that doesn't matter. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of go through and we'll do kind of like a season by season breakdown. Just a quick like overview of it. Talk we about have it. to do season four. We damn sure had to do season four, you son of a... All right. If he had to watch it! All right, all right. There will also be a lot of uh, high intensity. There's going to be some emotions here. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some words that are said. Things are going to get real heated, I already feel it. Things are going to get potentially heated, and there may be swearing. So I'm just going to go ahead and say... <laughs> no! Parental discussion advised. Okay. Uh, there will be adult themes and topics that will be discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially partial nudity. Nudity. Not on this screen, but there is, and in, we'll talk about it. Show. There yeah. was, and we will speak of it. Uh, uh, sexual content and sexual themes will be discussed. Uh, then there will also be discussion, probably towards the end, about the elephant in the room, the man that wrote the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and the things that are tied to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be a discussion about that at the end of the show. Right. Which we'll probably we'll, we'll end up wrapping up on. Uh, but I guess with that being said, so Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, was the original TV series written by Josh Whedon. During the, what is it, like second season Angel gets introduced? Uh, no, no, season one. He's yeah. in episode one. He yes, is, oh. he's introduced. Wow, that's yeah, great. 13 yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, in, uh, I think, maybe four episodes of the first season, which is only 12 episodes. Man, you don't show up for long. He's just kind of like, ooh, mysterious yeah, pops guy. pops in, pops out. Yeah. So, uh, essentially the backstory on him is that he was a Irishman, lived in the 1700s. He got turned into a vampire. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of very, very horrible things. Sure did. Uh, murdered lots of people. No, so that even that is underselling it. Angel, or Angelus, the vampire counterpart to him, is regarded as one of the worst vampires of all time. Infamous. Not say worse, because there's some bad vampires. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They're bad at their one job of being vampires. Oh, right, right. One of the most infamous... <laughs> destructive. Yes. Destructive. More so than Dracula. More, like, this guy had a reputation if he was in town. Just, just leave. It's not worth killing him. That town's dead. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, it would go through, kill entire towns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, he kidnaps... Um, a gypsy princess. Or a Roman Darla princess. kidnaps. Darla. But he does unspeakable things and he eats her. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Romanov family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Romani. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Romani. Whatever. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> learns of this and they put a curse on him. And the curse is that he is imbued with a soul. And since he gets a soul, he uh, feels tremendous amounts of remorse, guilt, for the things that he does. And mm-hmm. he remembers all of it. He has a... Uh, uh, photographic Conscious. memory um, that they say several times that he has a photographic memory so he remembers everything that he's ever done. Do they say several times he has a photographic memory? In Angel it comes up at least three times where he has a photographic memory and two other times where he forgets things and they say I thought you had a photographic memory. So I <laughs> I no that. joke! Yeah, Michael. Yeah! <laughs> like, <laughs> they literally make that a thing. Yes. Yeah, telly marks. <laughs> yes. Um, so he remembers everything that he's done and he feels a tremendous amount of guilt, and then spends the next, what would it be, 200 years at that point? No, no. it was 100 years yeah. of... Eating of, rats and yeah. hiding pretty much. Yeah, so it's at the turn of the century, the, 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 from the, the 20th century, the turn into the 20th century is when he was... So the start of the 1900s. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so he spends a lot, the next 100 years feeling a tremendous amount of guilt and, and disdain... During his time on Buffy, he ends up falling in love with Buffy. They have a moment. As soon as she's legal. Of pure happiness. Uh, yeah. As soon as she's of legal age. I never noticed that. Literally, as soon it's as she's legal. It's her birthday when she turns 18. 17, I believe. Oh, it's season two, so it must be 17. Yeah. She's 16 right now in, in season one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they share a moment. And in this moment, Angel attains a pure moment of happiness and joy. And pure per the curse, whenever he experiences a pure moment of happiness and joy, he loses his soul and reverts back to Angelus. That sounds like a bad curse. Right! Poorly thought out curse. Like, we're going to make this man feel remorse and guilt to make him uh, understand his actions. And now, when he actually, like, grows, when he finds forgiveness? Well, it's a curse. It spends to torture him for all eternity. Sure. So, yeah. so there wasn't there be a way to, to turn it off. Well, that's because it's he will know there's mm-hmm. a way to turn it off, and he doesn't want to go back to being Angela, so he can never actually be happy. Right? So if he goes for that... But what if he just didn't give a shoot? What if? He doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, what? He what does. if? There's a lot of what ifs, Larry. All right. <laughs> yeah. What if I? All right. Yeah. He does at one moment <laughs> not give a hoot. He and does. we'll talk about that. Yeah, that's season dose. Uh, we'll get there. Um... So he has this moment with Buffy in which he loses his soul. Does he know that he will lose his soul? No, not not, not the first time it happens. Okay. Um, so he has that moment. He loses his soul. He ends up doing horrible things to Buffy and her friends. He ends up getting back his soul. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, he dies. We're going to... Yeah, that's Buffy. That's yeah. that's Buffy talk. Um, We're doing it. He ends talk. up dying, coming back. He comes back. He helps them, and he says, hey, like, I'm going to leave because of being near you. Buffy's well, mom said, get out of town. He said, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and essentially being around her is too much of a temptation to, you know, sleep with this girl. Uh, and she's 17, you're 200. Yeah. 240. Yeah, he's 240 at that point, yeah. Um, so he leaves, and he's like, I'm going to go to Los Angeles. Bunch of vampire, bunch of cr- bunch of crimes. Yeah. City of angels. Gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pun. Uh, so Wait, I we- don't get it. He's Angel. It's a city I of angels. Get it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did you get, get it. it now. You get yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually instantly got it. He just became a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so we start off season one. Angel arrives in LA, and he is actually drinking his sorrows away. He it has a very the first season of Angel follows a very strong noir theme. Mm-hmm. In which case, there is a you know opening monologue where he's like in all the bars and yeah all he's half as Batman for sure yeah mm-hmm. he's literally in a bar drinking away his, his sorrows when we be our first person that's being introduced for the show which is a fellow Irishman in Doyle who is a half human half demon guy that mm-hmm. has visions i.e. a connection to the powers that be I'm gonna yeah. put those in quotes a lot because it gets said a lot and it doesn't really mean anything it's until it kind of means something it's supposed to be generic though yeah yeah um Doyle comes to Angel and says, hey, I'm having these visions. Uh, I'm supposed to come find you. You're supposed to help me. 
save people. The powers that be have imbued me with these powers so that we can go and help people. I would like to point out one specific thing about these visions. I'm sure you might have been planning on getting to it, but I feel like it's worth mentioning now. The visions are agonizing for Doyle. It's like getting hit with a freight train and having a massive migraine just suddenly out of nowhere. And that may not be important for Doyle, but it is important. So I want to like start stressing it now. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Please yes. do that because uh, these are these cliff notes that I wrote are very. Mm -hmm. I wrote these last night, um, and, and and I watched this like three weeks ago. And so. I do want to point out uh, that Doyle's character is he is, uh, for lack of a better term, kind of the. The gambler who's always down on his luck, a little slimy. You can't really trust him. You can always trust him to do the right thing when it counts the most. He's but a scoundrel. He's a scoundrel. He's he's always looking for a way to get a leg up. He's has a questionable past, has done some crime, and uh, he's he's the kind of a guy Does at the bar. Does he have a past? Yes. Because there's an episode where we talk about Doyle's past, and he gets the full breakdown of your, his oh, yeah, he was a teacher. Past. Yeah, he was a kindergarten teacher. Oh. He was a great man. Yeah, but that's what he learned his half demon, and it destroyed demon. his entire life. But he did it to himself because of his own... Uh, Psychological torture? Insecurities. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and that is something we're talking about. Ther therapy could have helped him. But... Anyways... We're still on the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> we have th this conversation is going to be hours long, it's dude. Gonna like be we're so here. Long. <laughs> uh, so the first mission that they're going to go do ends up leading them to one of these fabulous Hollywood parties where extremely powerful men, older men, are taking advantage of younger women that are trying to break into the scene for acting or legal reasons, like mm -hmm. getting into whatever profession they can. Which, I mean, the horror. Like, who could ever imagine something like that happening? Allegedly. Josh Whedon. Uh, <laughs> again, I'd like to say that this episode was written and directed by him. Okay. Um, but while at the party, he runs into an ex-Buffy co-star in Cordelia Chase, played, played by, by Kersley Carpenter. Yeah, absolutely fantastic and amazing. You can really see a, a somewhat... It's amazing to watch a series, set two different series, and watch someone remain bad actor for a while and then somehow one way or another like figures out how to do their job because they were not great in the in in buffy and then not in the first couple episodes of, of angel and then they got much better yes uh so while at the party they end up talking becoming kind of close and friends uh, well, not like close friends. No, but she like, was, oh, she's like, she's close friendly. Yeah. Oh, crazy seeing you here. And then, oh, but get out of here. I can't be seen talking to you. Right. I'm trying to talk to. Yeah, she's still Cordelia. She's point. still Cordelia. Right. Um, but yeah, brief acquaintance. Like they, mm -hmm. they, they talk. Uh, while at the party, Angel meets a very powerful businessman. Uh, that so happens to be a vampire. Mm. Yes. Uh, who is the target of the investigation that he's trying to go into and looking for? Um, essentially, they go home from the party, and then after from the party, uh, we find out that Cordelia has been targeted by this man, and she goes to his house to, uh... She thinks she's going to be getting a leg up on competition, maybe furthering her career through whatever she needs to do, but she's food. She's food. Which she does realize instantly in yeah. an amazing scene where yeah. she says, I'm from Sunnydale. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, the vampire goes... No mirrors, dark yeah. curtains, no crucifixes. You're a vampire! <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is absolutely a hilarious scene. Yeah. Very good scene. Um, Angel shows up at the place to rescue her. They end up tussling with the man. Uh, they escape with Cordelia. By they, I mean Doyle, who was waiting on in the car. Uh, they escape, they leave. Um, Angel learns where this businessman will be at the next day, goes to an appointment that he's at where he is meeting with his lawyers, which are represented by Wolfram and Hart, the... Wolfram Hart. Wolfram. Yeah. Wolfram, Wolfram, and, Wolfram and Hart. It's the law firm. Yeah. Yes. Wolfram and Hart. Yeah. Uh, who is the primary, well, I want to say the primary antagonist, but they are the overarching antagonist oh, yeah. of the series. They are the villains. They are the, They're the bad guys. Evil. They are the powers that be to all the other evils that come well, up. you don't know this yet. Right now you just know they're lawyers. Right now you just know they're, they're lawyers. They're lawyers. Which, I mean, they're lawyers. Mm -hmm. yeah, obviously <laughs> evil. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but he, but you, but he, what happens at this meeting? Yeah, so he shows up to this meeting and Angel's like, 
oh, you think your power and success can protect you, you think you're something special. And the vampire's like, oh, yeah, obviously, like, I'm a very powerful person, I do donations, like, there's nothing you can do to touch me, I'm literally above the law, and here are my lawyers to protect me. He's like, well, do you think you can fly? And gives him the 300 kick out a window into the sunlight, which, you know, sunlight and vampires. Not good. Wooj. Uh, sets him on fire, falls out of the, the, the building, and as he's leaving, the junior attorney that's there pulls out his cell phone, calls up the guys, and says, hey, senior partners. We have a new player in town. And that's... That's episode much, one. That's episode one. I, there's so much to talk about there. I, there's so much more in your synopsis. I see that. But there's a lot of stuff we're glossing over here. And I want to I wanna, I wanna pump the brakes and talk about things that happened. Sure, go for uh, it. More importantly, all the way back in the beginning, when Angel was drowning his sorrows, he was talking about, presumably, a blonde girl, Buffy, and he wasn't actually drinking or getting drunk. He was snooping, he was, uh, what's the word? He was hunting vampires. He knew, because he was talking to another guy, who he turned out to be a vampire, to save another girl from being eaten. And it wasn't until Angel went back to his home where Doyle approached him Correct. to get them there. And I should clarify, when I say uh, drowning his sorrows, I mean that in the pure analogy to film noir where right. you're one good drink away from turning bad, right? You have your mm -hmm. detective that's like one drink away from going over the edge. Mm -hmm. That's literally the metaphor that's happening for Angel right. in the beginning of the series. Okay, right. Uh, is that he drinks human blood once. You mm -hmm. know, he's on the edge mm -hmm. when it's the series starts. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's what I should have clarified. That's what I mean mm -hmm. by that. Mm -hmm. um, but he is kind of like down in the dumps well, then she's like, oh, thank you. And he basically tells her to shove off. Yeah. Yeah. He says, yeah, get out he of here. Want to be, yeah, he says, tempted. He's, yeah. He says, yeah. go home. Uh, meanly. But, fun fact, that vampire that he slayed would played the character Sawyer on Lost. No one. You guys might not know who that is. Never, never watched, watched Lost. Lost. Yeah, but he's, he's there. Yeah, he, I heard he, it was not, the ending's not great. I heard most of the series now, is not great. Do you remember yeah. why Doyle replaced Whistler or no? Because I sure don't. Whistler. Whistler. Was the guy that showed Angel Buffy in the Buffy flashbacks. He was supposed to be the connection. But they replaced him with Doyle. I don't remember why. I don't remember why either. I think it was the actor wasn't available. Okay. Yeah. Or perhaps... There wasn't much that I got to look up last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but... Whistler, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so we're going to keep moving. Um... We're going to skim a lot of episodes here. We're not going to do an episode by episode breakdown. Look how angry he is. All right. Well, I, I mean, it's there's, just like... That's a lot. We got to get, a lot going. Let's get to the end of this season so we can just talk about this season. Okay. Uh, let's talk about... Really not, because there's some other things I want to hit on here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do some other... There's a bunch of Monster of the Week stuff that kind of happens. A whole lot. A whole lot of Monster it of the Week that, stuff in season that one. It is that. That is the show. Uh, I would say season one is the most that... Yeah. And then the rest of the seasons kind of follow a more traditional storytelling pattern mm -hmm. where there is the quote-unquote big bad for the season and then they kind of tell that story. Season one is very much a each week something else is kind of going on. Mm -hmm. um, we get introduced to uh, Detective Lockley. Yep. Um, she, she works for the uh, LAPD. That's kind of his inside source for different information and learning about some of the scumbags and stuff like that. We did gloss over that... Uh... Angel Investigations at this point is enacted at the end of season one. Uh, at or the end of episode one. At the end of episode they one. They talk about joining in the business together, and I think like episode two or three, they end up making the cards and like, well, what's this yeah, symbol? Right. Which is card? Cordelia's part of it. Cordelia, is, yeah, yes. Cordelia comes and they uh, they form a private investigation business Cordelia's kind called of Angel Investigations, <laughs> and that's a really important part of season one that's why you guys in particular. Uh, they they are running a small business. Yeah, they come together. They are PI. They help the helpless for money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Help for the helpless, which their actual first one was help for the hopeless, and then they changed it to help to the helpless. Um, we get a couple episodes where we do crossovers with the Buffy series that are pretty, you know, one leads mm -hmm. right into the other. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, Angel and Buffy were still both on WB. Mm -hmm. um, it was not the CW yet. No, it actually was never the CW until after Angel. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, WB and UPN merged to make the CW after the series was over. Oh, okay. Um, so essentially, yeah, if you are familiar with CW series, 
that's kind of the same ballpark that we're dealing with because CW was made from the formation of WB, which is the Warner Brothers TV network, and UPN, which I forgot what their acronym even means, but they came together in the early 2000s mm -hmm. to make CW. Um, that's kind of the along the lines of what we're looking at. So you're looking at uh, each season has like 22 episodes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that format. Um, the first kind of major crossover that we get, uh, we get the Gym of Amara, which is something that shows up in the season three of Buffy. Season four of Buffy. Uh, season four of Buffy, thank you. Um, essentially, this is a gym that would make... It cures all of vampires' weaknesses, right? So mm -hmm. they can go out into the sun, they can't be staked. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure decapitating them still kills them, but... We never get that far. Never get that far. Uh, but essentially, in Buffy's series, they find the Gem of Amara, and Buffy has the heartfelt moment of, I'm going to send this to Angel, right? Everyone on the show says, just destroy it, just get rid of it. And she's like, no, I'm going to send it to Angel. So she sends Seth Green. So she, she sends, sends the character Oz, who has a show in L.A. that weekend, who takes it to Angel. And then Cordelia delivers the worst line I've ever seen in my life, where, she, where Oz, Seth Green characters, walks in and she goes, Oz? Oz! Just, it was just, there was no infliction between the two, and she's... Feigning shock and awe, not Cordelia. She's actually shocked that Oz is here, <laughs> and apparently happy, which doesn't make sense for Cordelia's character at all. And I mean, just seeing a familiar face. I guess sometimes it just be that way. L.A. Yeah. is you tough, know those man. people are like, yeah, I haven't seen you since high school. You were horrible to me. They don't care. Yeah, that's not what they remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they deliver the gem of Elmara to Angel. Whole rigmarole happens where it ends up getting taken from him. He gets tortured. By Spike, who's an important character. By Spike. Gets taken. There's a torture. Torture stuff happens. Torture takes it. He has a thing for kids. Angel's like, dude, we gotta stop this guy. They go down to the pier in the middle of the day. Fight it out. Underneath he, the pier so Angel could be there and there's... Correct. Uh, he gets the gym. Comes back home. Watches the sunset where he has his good friend Doyle there. Mm -hmm. And Doyle asks him if he's gonna keep the gym. To which Angel says, no, I'm going to destroy it. Doyle says, there's a lot of people you can help during the daytime. To which Angel responds, the people in the daytime already have a lot of help. They have help from the rest of the world. I need to stay in the nighttime so I can help people at night when there's no one to help. And then destroys the gym. Sure. Now, I'm just going to come out and say it. Mm -hmm. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> okay, all right, yes, Batman, but Tony has a... Batman does not only help during the night. Yes, he does. Okay. Unless it's a world-ending threat, he does not. I've seen Justice League episodes where he's helping the day. Yes, I've seen Batman in... When he's game. teaming up. <laughs> when he's teaming up. There's a lot of Justice League episodes. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of them. So, you know what, if there's a lot of world-ending threats, maybe he should be helping a little bit more during the day. And okay. I'm gonna say it, Apocalypse comes up in this show about every fourth sentence. It does. So, like, some of that stuff happens during the day. It it's does. pretty fucking I'm sweet to have a vampire. Mm -hmm. thing, but there is precedence. It was edgy for edgy's sake. So, so we're here, we're, we're at episode three right now, it feels like, right? I, I don't know, it's like three or four. It's know. one of the first episodes. So, it, awesome. so what I really felt like, uh, it's dumb, he should have kept the ring. However, he didn't want... He knows that an element of his strength comes from the fact that he doesn't get what he wants. Not necessarily like his physical strength, but like the reason why he's good at what he does is because one, he can't get lazy because he's not immortal. He can be killed. Two, he, if he can go out in the sunlight, why would he keep doing what he does if he could have a normal life? Do you know what I mean? He would stop. His whole point for doing what he does is to redeem himself and have self-absolution. But he might lose it. What if? It's a lot of what ifs. It's, also, there's some times uh, later on in the series where he's getting his dick beat pretty fucking hard, be pretty nice if you're immortal. Um, I mean, big part of his character is he needs restraint. He's like mm -hmm. masochistic, restraint type man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That being said... Still pretty fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would I make that same choice? 
Uh, also, like the way that I justified it in my head is like this is far too powerful of a gem. What if I ever turn evil? Or someone else takes it? Or someone else? Takes it. That's the right. way that I ended up justifying yep. it in my head. And and that's again, not what they said. Every but other vampire on the planet will figure it out. Come for a murder Cordelia right. to get this thing. Right. right. That's how I ended up justifying it in my head. But that's not what they said, and that's not how they played the scene at all. He played it as I need to be there at nighttime because no one helps people at nighttime. Like, bro, do you think cops just get off at eight o'clock and they're done for the fucking day? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do you think his trench coat looks as cool during the day? No. Yes, trench coats look badass all the time when you're walking like that. You remember that guy? I do. He walks slow. If you walk faster, <laughs> you're more badass. So here's also a thing: is that there's still vampires at night. He is more equipped to deal with the vampires at night than police officers are. True. If he was he... more worried about vampires in general in the beginning. Yeah. Yes, I so, understand that, but it was still like. And there's a lot of other things that go bump in the night that he I needs know. to be working on. So that's just a bit of it. I know. It was just one of those things. I'm like, bro, you so dumb. We we glossed over so so much. And I'm a little upset about it. And I mean, we can go back. Yeah. What, do you, what else? Do you yeah, like, we don't got an episode by episode. We could just... I'm not trying to go episode by episode. He's trying to synopsis synopsis. But what do you like about What do you like about season one, sir? Season one. Well, I I did really enjoy the noir and uh, monster of the week aspect of it. However, this was when these crossovers happened. They were not as common as they are today. True. That was a big deal. An actor from another show, spin-offs themselves. Do you know what I mean? The one before this, maybe, was Frasier. I'm not sure on the timing on that. And that was the a spin-off. Yeah. People forget. Um, so this was rare, and it, they were trying their hardest to make it work. They're bringing characters over that we know and love, popping in. Spike still being a villain at yep. this point in time, before he has any of his hindrances or i.e. soul later on in Buffy, he is still trouble, hard trouble. And he's coming up with, like, that's not a big deal. Or that is a big deal. Yes. So that's really what I love about it. And even when we were watching it, this was kind of, when we watched it, the, only the first couple of movies of the MCU came out. So yeah. the crossovers were big. And that's why I'll always has, have a special place in my heart. We haven't even gotten to the end of it. The end of it being, what happened at the end of season one? Oh, we didn't talk about the middle where Doyle well, dies. Yeah, calm down. Goodness there's gracious. Still, there's still more to go. I have paragraphs here, bro. Well, let's jump up to, let's jump up to where Doyle dies. <laughs> So then Doyle dies. Well, hold on. There's one other episode I want to talk to before we get to Doyle's death. Okay. And it's a very important episode. Spoilers. Obviously. We're talking about the whole series here. Yeah. Uh, the show ended in 2005. Yeah. There's an episode in which Buffy shows up to Angel's house mm -hmm. to talk to him about things that are going on. While they're there, they are accosted by a demon. That's right. This is a very important episode. Yes, oh, it, it sure is. Yeah. Uh, in this episode, blood from this demon... Mixes. Mixes with Angel's blood. And it inadvertently, serendipitously, <laughs> calls a cure for vampirism. So he becomes human. So in this episode, he gets to kind of live out a night as a human. And he gets to share a night with Buffy in the truest sense, as if they were actually together as like a real couple. Mm -hmm. And they get to live off the shipper's dreams, right? Everybody gets to have like everything they ever wanted. And they're like legitimately a cute couple. And he's like laughing and having a good time and has a smile on his face. And like has emotions, and he has a <laughs> wonderful night with Buffy, and then he realizes that he doesn't have superpowers anymore. Right? He's no longer yeah. He's he no has, super strength. He's just a dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That likes ice cream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he sees Buffy get into a fight, and he tries to help, and he fails mm -hmm. because he's just a dude. And he ends up going to Doyle and asking Doyle if there's any way that the powers can be, can revert what has happened, or make him a vampire again with his soul. Doyle says something along the lines of, like, I don't know if there's anything I could do, but I can show you to people that can. Mm -hmm. uh, so he takes him to the oracles, which the oracles are supposed to be the... The um, voice to the powers. The voice to the powers, yeah. yeah. The, the, the go-between. The go-between. The, the, the conduit. I think that's exactly what they call it, is the yeah. conduit. Or, well, no, that's what they use when they're... At Wolf yeah. Heart, but it's the, the same. It's yeah, the, the non evil conduit. Yeah. Um, so Doyle takes him to the oracles, and Angel asks, begs the oracles to kind of change everything. Like, right? is there any way that you can make me a vampire again with a soul? Like, none of this 
you know, that way I can keep fighting evil. Mm -hmm. To which the Oracle say, the only way we can do that is if we turn reset back time. time. We turn back time. Everyone will forget everything that has happened. Except for you. Except for you. You will remember everything that happens. And he says, yeah, let's do it. So he gives up his chance to be with the woman that he loves so that he can keep fighting evil. Um, he goes back in time. They go back to the moment where the blood would mix with him. Doesn't happen. He ends up killing the demon himself. Buffy's there. He ends up getting into like a little bit of a tiff with Buffy, and he sends her away saying... Like, yeah, shove off. I don't want anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. There's no way that we can ever be together or anything like that. And he sends her off. This man discovered the cure to vampirism. And, and should have never been spreading it around yet. Talks about it ever again to anyone. Doesn't even talk about it to Wesley later on, which we'll get to him. But what? Yeah. What? Yeah. This is a really big freaking deal. It is. Yeah. It sure is. And also, it's never talked about again. I would like to point out that uh, we're about to talk about several human characters because several are going to be showing up. There's Wesley and there's Gunn, who are both human, who can beat the living crap out of demons yes. and monsters and vampires and do it well. Yes. Angel couldn't figure it out? No. Years of... Th this man doesn't know, like, Kung Fu? So so he actually does. <laughs> you forget Buffy. The whole thing of season five with Riley feeling useless. He would be Riley. You remember that's why Riley fucked off? He's like, I can't keep up with my superpowered girlfriend. It's the exact same storyline when it happens. Okay. He felt emasculated. Toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Or actually, she's in danger. I would like to help her because she's in danger and I care. Xander has been doing it forever! Xander gets kicked around. Yes, he does, but he also saves Buffy's life on multiple occasions. We're not talking about Buffy. We're talking about Angel. <laughs> but Gone has saved Angel's life. Wesley has saved Angel's life. Cordy has saved Angel's life. They can fight vampires. They can... As efficiently? No, but as a team, they can work mean, out just as just fine. Like you just give it up. And he, also, he's a lone wolf. He needs to do it himself. Angel yeah. gets the exactly. crap kicked out of him all the time. Yeah, but his body can take it and he heals fast. Are you going to tell Wolverine to get up his powers? Wolverine would still keep fighting. That'd be it's very. Actually, he dies without his powers. Okay, the animantium. Like, <laughs> because of the animantium. I mean, he would also that, just die from getting stabbed a lot. Right. Because right. Right. he has to run up and go great. I think the important thing here, right, is that he feels a level of insecurity without having that fighting in his life. Without list. what makes him special. Still also yes. has that sense of duty, though. N no, he doesn't... He doesn't... He wants the fighting in his life. Right. He, he still has an avenue towards it. What he wanted was to be special. He wants to be the vampire with a soul. And we can talk about that, because he wants the, the prophecy to be about him. He didn't know about the prophecy yet. He not didn't. Yet. Not yet. It's but it's, 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 yeah. it's even further driven, that whole thing, the prophecy that we get at the end of the episode, how the vampire with a soul will be restored and made human. He wants the prophecy. He doesn't ever want it to be fulfilled. He, that makes him special. That makes him the one. He doesn't care about the saving lives. He doesn't care about the fighting. He wants the cool superhero strength yeah. and to be the title card on the TV series. Yeah, why would you give it up? He wants to be the CEO of Wolfram and Hart. He wants to be the boss. He actually, these, he just said everything I was going to say. These are no, why give it up? <laughs> he, well, he doesn't have to. And he, he made a decision yes. Yes. for countless people's lives. They killed the demon in that universe, didn't they? Uh, in the original one, yes, they had killed it. They ki they had killed it. Yeah. It was just dangerous and bad. Yeah. Right. Like, he had a hard time. He got hurt. Yeah. People he got were hurt safe. And he felt useless watching Buffy do everything and he, while he sat there. People yeah. were being saved. And again, maybe not as efficiently, I don't think he's doing it any better than anybody else. He's reckless. He gets people hurt. F friends have died. Multiple. Multiple friends have died. <laughs> he should just not be doing this. So. <laughs> he makes a wish, turns back time, mm -hmm. never tells anyone about the cure for vampires. Sure does And he wants to be special. <laughs> he wants to be special. Which is fine. He could literally have the cure for all of it. Say, I put it in all caps. He never talks about <laughs> <laughs> Ever again. 
I was waiting. Uh, you know, yeah, I, was waiting to, one. I was waiting to say something just in case because like we watched the last episode, like maybe they'll do a callback because they did fix one of the things in the last episode. What was that? that? I was, the baby. Oh, like go back to the baby. Yeah, I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way you're like <laughs> not gonna save this kid. <laughs> right, anyways, <clears throat> in the following episodes after that, he's back to being special. He's mm -hmm. joined the destroyed the gym of Malar, so he can't be super special. That way he's special in his own special way, so he can't help everyone but just be special at night. Yeah. And just, just show enough to be the guy. Yes, yeah. yes. He uh, could have saved countless people! Being anyways, uh, in the following episodes we get a lot of character development for Doyle, mm -hmm. um, as we've already spoiled and kind of right. shot the gun here. This he's is always... when we meet his ex-wife. Yes, we meet his ex-wife. Uh, we learn all about his past where he was a Teacher, I think, grade school or kindergarten? Nah, just kids. Young young kids. Whatever, man. They're yeah. all the same. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, <laughs> we learned that he did a lot of great things until he learned that he was actually half demon, in which case he kind of doesn't handle it well. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes off the rails, devolves into a life of sketchiness, um, meets his ex-wife's fiancé, and gets offered up as a serving dish right. to uh, celebrate be, their wedding. Be, yes. So... XY's fiance is now also part demon, the whole demon bloodline, and in this demon's particular culture, if they are to marry somebody and then that bride was previously married, they must eat the brains of the ex-husband. And it's a really big deal. Doyle is trying to- That is to, a really big deal. Doyle is trying to be <laughs> supportive. Doyle is trying to be good and like accepting of his wife choosing this life and uh, uh, doesn't know that he agrees to be part of the meal. And she doesn't know he's going to be eaten. She doesn't know he's going to yeah, be eaten. Yeah, she had no idea. Um, also, during all of this, Doyle has a thing for Cordelia, which, of course, he would. Cordelia is very pretty. Uh, and so That's the only thing about a person. And knows... At this point, And yes. is involved <laughs> in the, the this weird subculture of the world. Knows about the monsters, knows about the vampires, knows about the demons, and is proven to be powerful in her own right, and confidence, and uh, help fight, save people, a hero. So... And back then she had answered phones. Poorly. Yes. She, <laughs> she was helping Angel do his job poorly, too, so it works out. So many poor jobs. So many poor jobs done. Do you like the show? <laughs> yes, I do. Just... Yeah, she was also bad at acting in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. She was, she was bad at everything she tries for a while. But uh, she didn't know that Doyle was part demon. And no. Doyle didn't know how to break the news to her and ask her out on a date. Because he didn't want to keep that from her. For this very reason. Yes, that she was kind of close-minded in terms of relative, you know, demonage. Mm -hmm. And how people, you know... Are. Uh, multiple times she kind of says she kind of dunks on demons, demons and half demons and says that they're like worse than trash and he just kind of stands there and goes like Ooh. Ooh. Um, so in the following episodes we end up running into a cult of demons that are trying to destroy all of humanity uh, as, they, as do. they do and uh, half breeds and anything, half -breeds anything that has the blood of the human in them would be are there enemies? So this is really interesting, because I do want to make a callback to Buffy at this point. That is the judge? What? That the shitty version of the judge? No, is that we learn at the end of season three in Buffy, we've never seen a pure-blooded demon. Pure-blooded demons are something that can only exist in hell. Dude, it's been like five years since I've watched Buffy. I don't remember. At the, so, that, so that's the thing. In order to exist on this plane... There has to be some mixture of human blood, and their power has to be diluted. And it's it's a whole episode where we learn, and that's what the mayor's um, motive motive is is to, for whatever reason, weaken that bond and become his full demon self at the end of graduation in the ceremony. Um, so, if that were true, and these. Can we, call, can we call them demon Nazis? Because they're demon Nazis? Yeah, they're much what they are. yeah demon yeah. Nazis. I think they even had, like... Oh, they, they're they, very, yeah, they, like, they pretty, yeah. SS. Yeah. yeah, so... Demon Nazis. If By the rules of their own universe, they should have human blood in them. They cannot be full demons. And if they were full demons, they'd be a much bigger threat. And we would have heard about them by now. Right? Sure, sure. But that's not sure. how stories work. Sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I can tell that nobody else... <laughs> yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Um, so they have a plan to set up a bomb that's going to destroy anything that has human blood in it. 
Uh, the only way that ends up being able to stop it is you have to like cross the wires on the bomb and like complete the circuit to destroy the bomb. And when that would happen, someone also channels the energy that's going through it and will die. Mm -hmm. uh, Angel runs up there and goes, hey, I'll do it, obviously. I'm the good guy. I'm special. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. At which time Doyle runs up there and like, no, you can't do it. You have to stay here and protect all these people. Because you're special. Because you're special. <laughs> you're so special. And then he turns to Cordelia, and in a moment that's actually, like, I played it up kind of like a joke, but it's truly sincere and, like, a nice moment. He shares a kiss with Cordelia. Mm -hmm. Tells her. We'll find out. He says, I guess we'll never know. Changes his demon f to his demon face. If this is a face you could never love. And then he kisses her. Yep. Yeah. And then jumps onto the bomb. Eats the poop. Diffuses the bomb but also dies in the process. I, I would like to apologize for something that I did before. When I saw this, I immediately texted Larry and said, Doyle dies. And he <laughs> responded back with, don't ruin stuff for me. <laughs> we have a nasty habit of doing that. I apologize <laughs> for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does. Well, I mean, was it you that when you we were first watching, oh yeah, Angels of Empire. I'm like, I've never fucking seen any of this. So. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was common knowledge. Apparently it wasn't. No, I was. <laughs> yeah. Blank slate. Blank slate. Blank slate. <laughs> Oof. So anyways. Uh, Doyle dies. Now, in the moment that they've shared the kiss, a very special thing happens. Doyle imparts his visions to Cordelia, um, which is hugely important because mm -hmm. now she becomes the metaphorical voice for the powers There's that, that be. be. And she is the one that will start receiving the visions now. Mm-hmm. This is, I cannot undersell how important of a moment this is for the entire series, which is why I'm not making any jokes, right? I'm not trying to, like, undercut it in any way. This is huge. Mm -hmm. And will play years to come. Mm -hmm. okay? um, not only for the sense The rest that, of the show. Yeah. Yes. Not only in the sense that Doyle dies, and his death acts as a foil for a lot of characters mm -hmm. for, like, two or three episodes, and he gets mentioned again. Mm -hmm. No, he pops up here and there. Like they, they watch that video. They do. They do. But it's only like three or four times in the entire series they ever talk about him again. Mm -hmm. uh, which is shitty, in my opinion. Because um, I think that those first, like, I think it's like episode nine or ten that he dies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tamper um, through. So, like, those first couple episodes, like, he kind of felt like one of the most human characters on the show. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the one that has the most personality. He's the one that has the most depth. Especially after you learn about his entire, like, past. He's like, dude, this guy's super fucking interesting. Right. And then dies the next episode. Mm -hmm. But then we get Wesley. But then we get the introduction of another Buffy alum, uh, which is Wesley Wyndham Price. Yeah. He's a rogue demon hunter now. Alexis Denioff. Played by Alexis Denioff. I'm a rogue demon hunter now. Yes. He shows up, he's playing as a rogue demon hunter. Just like a biker. Because he was kicked out of the Watchers. Because he was kicked out of the Watchers. Because of stuff that happened in Buffy. We'll cover that when Faith shows back up. Um, if we remember who Faith is. If we remember who Faith is. <laughs> I've already forgotten. Ah, uh, yeah. No, hold on. Wow, she's super important. I know, yeah. I know, yeah. I know, I know. It's uh, other Slayer. What What Slayer? Main Slayer? Who, who knows? There she's is the something, main Slayer sometimes. I, I, hate, I hate that I'm keeping doing this because I'm just poking flaws in this. But let's go talk about how Angel's not special again because Doyle doesn't say, no, you have to stay and help these people. He knocks out Angel, if yeah. I remember correctly. He punches him in the face and knocks him out. So the way TV works, if you're a sneak attack, you get knocked out easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that is the way TV works. But again, if we've been able to do this the entire time to Angel. How often is he getting sneak attacked? A lot. One good punch knocks anyone out. Yeah. yeah. In TV yeah. series. Okay. That's, that's fine. Plus, that's okay, we're, we're accepting He that. needed his Krillin moment. He did need the Krillin moment. He needed so Goku can go Super Saiyan. He's his Krillin. <laughs> he is oh, Angel. No, that's so depressing to think about. Oh, he was so much cooler than Krillin. Krillin had Destructo Disc, but... <sighs> and Doyle Doyle's had alcoholic. spikes on his face. Destructo Disc was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. And an alcoholic. Just... <laughs> took that little nick out of Napa. <laughs> I mean, everyone used it better than him, but... Right. It was a great move he made. <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, anyways, he's dead now. Yeah, super dead. Super dead. Not coming back. Either. Yeah, for real. No, super which was surprising. surprising. Yeah, I was like, oh, they'll bring her back. I like, oh, no, they did not. Yeah, that was it. It was done. So yeah, we get introduced to yeah, the, uh, reintroduced, reintroduced to Wesley Wyndham, who was right. a shit character before. 
you were like made to hate this man. Yes, this man in all his previous experiences. Yes, like, in Buffy he was a shitter. Um, I would say damn near predatory, right? Like he hits on high school girls. Mm -hmm. He's a he's she a, was legal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was Cordelia, right? He didn't. He Cordelia. asked that question, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So he ends up showing up. He's hunting a demon because he's a rogue demon hunter now, and that's what he does. Uh, and he kind of plays the role in the in the season one at least of comic relief. Mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of the butt of every joke. He you know like trips on himself, but but immediately comes in, and I think he, when he shows up, he's hunting a demon. That's where he runs into Angel, and then there is also. They're at in Angel Investigations, and there's an attack where, again, the human character who is a dweeb very clearly held his own on the demons that were attacking them and and protecting Cordelia and hey, you're watcher training. Yeah, sure. Watcher training. I've uh, even killed a vampire in very controlled circumstances, and Giles is like, yeah, it's not something you'll find here. Controlled circumstances. Go ahead. Uh... So yes, they have their, their little moments together, and then he ends up joining the team full-time as kind of the role of what would be the sister role to Giles, right? The, the guy that reads the books, knows mm -hmm. the things, mm -hmm. can give exposition when needed. Uh, that's kind of the role he fills for the first season. I'm just going to come out and say it now. I actually think this show is about him. I think <laughs> what? <laughs> he has the most development on anyone. Of yes, he shows, does. I think he is actually secretly the main character of the show. <laughs> and when we get to the end, I'm gonna die on that fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so not really. So did he? Sorry, I need to a little bit more. Did like you, the, the final episode solidify that for you? Uh, I mean, the show doesn't continue after he dies. I, spoilers. Go ahead. So. I think he might actually be the main character of the series. If not, he's at least the most interesting. I mean, it also doesn't... Yeah, I mean, Gunn dies and it stops there, too. Why can't Gunn be the main character, then? Less well, I don't see him die. Oh, he sure fucking dies. <laughs> I don't see that. We don't, actually. They tell you he's dying in at least ten minutes. Most. Well, yeah. guess what? The credits roll 20 seconds later. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> it's also implied that all of them die. Sure ain't. Go on. It's implied. It's a demon. One's an elder god. So that's that's put into like this mortal. They're coil. actually much. Weaker. She's human at that point, or she's back into a mortal coil at that point. She's right. had all of her power. She's still away. Mo no, not all. She started getting back. No, she was just strong, but she couldn't do like the temporal. No, yeah. she couldn't do that, but so she was still near involved. We were talking about a character whose first character hasn't even showed up yet. Sure, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> look at, look at, look at, it's a whole ass season. That's uh, I know. That's not until season three, right? Uh, two. End of two. two. Yeah. Um, so we're getting close to the end of season one, uh, at which point we are introduced to Charles Gunn, who uh, is a vampire hunter. Who has a, you know, a, a group of kids who... Yeah, essentially yeah, street yeah. kids. Young street Vagrant kids. Vagrant kids, homeless yeah. kids, yes. or maybe not homeless, but like, he's got a community of people that he looks after. Yes. Uh, and they run the streets and yep. try to protect people from vampires. Yes, it's specifically, like, it's kind of, if you thought about it, like, if the supernatural were, it's also kind of like a gang war, where mm -hmm. they're just trying to keep their territory yes. safe. Um, they very much have that analogy later on, I think it's like the second or third season, where they it's like pretty on the nose that they talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like it was hidden in the first place anyways, but... Uh, during this time, Angel meets up with them. Gun's like, all vampires are evil. I'm going to kill you. Angel's like, nah, bro, I'm special. Yeah, I'm, so, right? I'm so special. Please help me. Uh, so they end up hunting the vampires that have moved in next to Gun's crew, during which time Gun's sister gets turned into a vampire, mm -hmm. and he must stake her. In a very, it, it's person. a real moment. It's a real moment. It's like, that's another reason why I really enjoy... Uh, Season one, because the stakes are really high, pun intended. They... <laughs> Him killing his sister, like, you don't really get another moment like that all series long. No. Yeah. It's a very, like, intimate moment where he's, like, crying and very much devastated that he's having to destroy his own sister. Mm -hmm. Which is a very emotional, raw connection. And afterwards, he, like, buries it. Mm-hmm. Like, in a very unhealthy way. Like, oh, he, yeah. instantly is like... Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like, does not talk it off. Shuts that down immediately. And it... Dr I think... 
ultimately, this is a very important driver for his character up until season five. Mm-hmm. And then the second half of season five, it comes back. Uh, but like the first half of season five, it gets kind of like dropped. But it's one of those things where he sees that just doing what he's doing isn't enough. Mm-hmm. He needs right. someone special. He Ooh. needs someone special. He needs someone special. Yeah. Uh, he needs, to, or needs to do more himself, right? Because just fighting to survive isn't going to be Yeah, because he has no superpowers. It'd be much better to fight vampires with superpowers. Mm-hmm. So he enlists a man with superpowers. He does not enlist a he, man. He teams up joins. With. <laughs> teams up with. Well, at that point, he's still freelance. He is still freelance. He actually doesn't join until, like, until partway through the second the season. Yeah. Shows up. yeah. Um, but that's our kind of first introduction to him, and it's pretty important mm-hmm. to state that. So yeah. Yeah, he's, he's only like two or three episodes in the first season. Right. But, um, after Gunn's appearance, we're on like the last like three episodes of season one, pretty close to it. Uh, Angel learns that there is a prophecy in which a vampire with a soul will play an important part in the apocalypse. Um, they do not know if it's for good or for evil, and it's kind of unclear. Uh, Wesley is in the process of translating some of the important aspects of it. Um, during this time, Angel learns that Wolf, Wolf Roman Hart mm-hmm. is planning to summon a super powerful evil thing. Yes, uh, they do. At this time, Wolf Roman Hart actually does summon something, but not the super evil thing that they he is expecting. They summon a demon. Angel's like, oh, I need to go kill this demon thing. He's chasing after this demon. This demon goes around killing all the avenues of connection to the powers that be. That is what he's tasked with. Mm-hmm. So his first stop is stopping off at those oracles. Right. Can't have time changing things anymore in the future. Right. We're just going to get rid of those guys. That's right. too much of a loophole. Yep. Got to tie that up <laughs> right now. Probably should have been a that. Like, Please remember, so. <laughs> but we're just going to tie that one off right now. Yeah. Uh, then he targets Cordelia. Angel stops that. Um learns that where the actual summoning's happening and he's like i'm gonna go stop that you know can't be having that i'm special so i need to go stop this summoning so he shows up to where wolfram and his heart is doing their super evil summoning thing and attempts to stop them and fails wolfram and heart does end up summoning their super thing of evil we do not know what it is because it is locked inside of a box Mm -hmm. i don't remember this at all yes this is the end of season one right um go ahead they they summon this being that's inside of a box. They push the box away, at which time uh, Lindsay, who is an important member of the firm at Wolfram and Hart, has been a, in many episodes. Been up in to this many episodes. episodes. And we, we, we have not mentioned him until just now. It's he literally whatever, man. All been right. a rival to Angel this entire time. He's a time. bad guy lawyer that's important. Yes. He's a bad guy lawyer that's important. That's pretty much... He, he doesn't become a big, big deal till later. He also feels flippy-floppy. He goes to Angel several times and is like, hey, I want to be a good guy, but I don't know how to be a good yeah, guy. Yeah, he always goes back to being a bad guy. Oh, he goes back to being a bad guy. Back being a bad guy. Yeah. So Lindsay's like, I'm going to impress these senior partners, right? These bees, these guys are going to know what's up. I'm going to take out Angel. So he goes to go fight Angel, and Angel says, suck my knob, throws an axe at him, chops off Lindsay's hand. Mm-hmm. Super easy. Super easy. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, he has superpowers. Because he's special. <laughs> I'm going to keep circling back to how he used his superpowers. Okay. Just, uh, if he was a normal guy, he could not throw an axe. Not like that. I've seen some good axe throwers. But he would have just been a normal guy. So right. I can't throw an axe that well. So I'll take that. Exactly. If it's something that I couldn't do <laughs> as a normal bro that's just been like alive, you know, not for 200 years or knowing kung fu or anything like that, I'll, you know, I'll give it, I'll give it a pass here. I'll give it a pass here. But he chops off the hand. Uh, Wolfram and Hart escapes with their thing that they've summoned and Wesley ends up informing Angel that the prophecy that he has been deciphering has both the words dead and alive in it. Or I think it's death and birth. Or, no, or death and live, whatever. Uh, moral of the story is that if Angel completes the prophecy, he will be restored to human and have his burdens lifted. They do not say what burdens is, but they just oh. say burdens are lifted. To which Angel goes, oh. And he smiles briefly. Because he wants to be human. Like he just wasn't fucking human Ooh, ten it. episodes ago. Gotta earn it. Like he doesn't know how to cure vampires. Okay, <laughs> what sounds cooler? Oh, I got some blood in me and now I'm a guy. Or I saved the fucking world now I'm a guy. I get it, but it's the yes. fact that he's like, 
being human, that'd be pretty cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just like, what yep. the? So we are missing something because when he first hears the news, Wesley is concerned because uh, he doesn't react. He's like, all right, fine. Who cares? He was. He had a very uh, nonchalant, nonchalant, or indifferent response. Prophecies, to it. prophecies. It's like I don't care about the prophecies. I'm helping people now. Me looking forward to that, getting this reward. That means I stopped doing this because he did stop doing it. I don't know why he needs to be special to do what he does because he doesn't. Because Gunn does what he does. Wesley does what he does. Cordy does what he does. I'm gonna keep hitting that the entire time, and. That's my point. But yes, he learns that he can become mm -hmm. human. He's pretty excited mm -hmm. for that. And the, the season ends with us learning that the evil thing that was brought back from this evil abyss... Is his ex-girlfriend. Is his ex-girlfriend. Darla! He forgot. He forgot that Darla existed. What an idiot! <laughs> That's Julie right. Bugs, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So we learn that Darla comes back. Mm -hmm. That chick that was We're so important before. A really big thing, too. Angel Investigations blows up at the end of season yeah, one. Yeah, 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 whatever. They blow up his home and place of business yeah, 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 at the end of season it one. It literally is not important. Yeah. It literally is because in the next season, we open up with the Hyperion. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. That, they in the grand scheme of things, it yeah. is it's zero all, importance. They blew up this place, let me go to this place. They fight a demon, it's his new place. Yeah. He has That place done. wasn't special. He was special. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Again, yes, they destroy his home in the process. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not the important part of the episode that I took away. I... <laughs> the bringing back of Darla, the girl that sired Angel, mm -hmm. his... well, up until then was very, very not important. Super not important. Like, she showed up two or it... three times in Buffy, got fucking murdered pretty yeah, quick, easy. I think it's episode five where she dies in, yeah. in Buffy. Barely mentioned her. Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, oh, hey yeah, yeah, I sired you. And like, that was it. Yeah. And then there's... Uh, yeah, yeah. So we start season two. We start season two. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, season two, as I said, starts at a lovely hotel called the Hyperion, which Angel used to live in at the 50s while he had a soul. And while that uh, was happening, there turns out to be a demon that feeds off anger or grief. Despair. Uh, despair who was manipulating all the uh, residents. residents of the hotel to basically hate each other and kill each other. And they end and up... And kill themselves. And yes. kill themselves. And Angel confronts the demon trying to save the day. He turns out, he doesn't, he, like, he, he realizes he doesn't want to save any of these people. Because they kill him. Well, they what, happen, they kill him. what happens is, like... They killed the girl, a girl that right. The no, girl that's she's there. still alive. The girl that's there ends up robbing a bank, mm -hmm. right? One yeah. of the residents there. Angel gets close to her. She's looking for a place to stay. It comes to a point in time where the residents of the hotel turn on Angel. They say, he's the one that's killing everyone here. Mm -hmm. We need to take care of him. And or, well, they actually, they turn on the girl. They say that yeah, she's the one she doing. blames him. She blames he Angel. He loses faith in right. humanity. He gets lynch mobbed and goes, yes. fucking have them all. Yes. Kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. He says, kill them all. Yeah, and then leaves. Yeah. Uh, at which time, you know... 50 years later, he's like, I'm here to finish the job, goes back to this bookstore thing that he went to 50 years ago, ends up killing the demon, and the old lady, well, the lady is Girl. old now, is old now because it's been 50 years, and she's been living in the hotel, mm -hmm. being fed off by this demon. Uh, and Don't know where she got food. That's... This is before weird. Uber Eats, so... This right. was before Uber Eats. <laughs> Not even DoorDash, bro. Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so she ends up passing in his arms, and he forgives her for the things that happened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, Monster of the Week, next episode. They have a hotel now. They bought the hotel. Yeah, yeah, that's whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he lives there now. Uh, starting off with the actual story for season two of what's important. Come on, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. It's our home for the next uh, yes, three seasons. Is it important that it's that? No, it's literally just somewhere for them to hang out. It is the set. Yep. Was the library important? No. No, that's why I got destroyed by the hell multiple times. Was the magic times. box important? They got supplies there. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they had magic stuff there that was slightly more important, but still. And that's true. Magic box is more important than the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Buffy's house is more important than the hotel. That's true. Yeah. 
the crypt is more important than. Oh, the spice crypt? Yeah. For sure, he's got TV there. That's right. <laughs> It was still warm. You guys, <laughs> so much. <laughs> God. I don't know. What do you want to say? I've, I've said it. Keep going. Okay. You grew attached to the hotel. Does you not mean to the over our overarching plot. It was more important. Okay, let's. You please continue. Uh, uh, continue just enumerating events uh, off your list. I shall. <laughs> We're hitting the big one so that we can talk about it later. Great. Uh, so th <laughs> this is gonna be like an hour long video of you just reading this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. What do you want me to do? Great. I mean, we could just talk about the show. Go, 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 but, go ahead. All right. So, season two, the actual story of season two is Darla messing with Angel. Mm -hmm. Right. So we get a significant amount of in interference where we have now learned that when she came back, she came back as human. She has a soul. Um, as of right now, she does not feel remorse in the same way that Angel does. But she's dying from syphilis. But she is dying from syphilis. Mm. Um, so we don't time, get to that until after, right? It's like part way through. It's like halfway. Yeah, yeah. she's like, oh man, I'm still sick because I was sick when I turned. Yeah, uh, but she's been fucking with Angel, yep. going into his dreams, messing with his brains, mm -hmm. making him kind of lose lose focus, make mm -hmm. him off his game. Yeah, she's being dick. Um, at this time, I don't think he actually doesn't realize that she's brought back yet. Uh, he's just been dreaming about her a lot. He's and sleeping. Yeah. All day long, and Cordelia gives him crap, like, it's 1.30 and you're going to bed? Yeah, he's a vampire. He needs to be up at night. Yeah, it's the only time he can function, because he got rid of the gym. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, So, eventually, Angel learns that she's back, and that she's being held at Wolfram and Hart. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you know what, I'm going to go save her. Like, this lady is super important to me. I He acts like he has feelings for her, which he does. But the feelings that he is showing is that, like, I need to save her because I love her and I'm emotionally connected to her. I never picked up on that. I felt certainly an emotional connection, uh, but, I mean, he's a, a tortured her hero character. I never felt like he was falling in love with her, but he just... He still cared for her. He, yeah. yeah, there's you can do that and and not be in love. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he threw her right the fuck away later, but... Yeah. Well, that, yeah, afterwards. Which is the the point that I want to get to because that, that well, happens this, so before again, the syphilis. Again, uh, this is when she's first kind of back. Mm -hmm. So his entire thing is, I need to save her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I have feelings for her. I also think he feels it would save himself since, you know, she's the one that made him. It'd be some he weird... He actually literally says that line. Exactly. In an episode where he's like, I thought if I could save her, I could save myself. So it's, yeah, very literally says that line. Uh, so he goes to save her. He ends up saving her. There's some fuckery that happens where she ends up like kind of sort of torturing him, kind of sort of not torturing him, and then like she runs out into the daylight. She's like, "I'm human now." And he learns that he's human, and she's like, "I'm starting to feel remorse for the things that I've done because like now she's been back for like a couple weeks, so like all the stuff's slowly coming back, and she's slowly kind of going like, "This is how you live. Like this sucks. <laughs> like why would you want to be this? See, you want superpowers. Sure, yeah." I mean, there's other ways, but yeah. 